baseball and assistant football coach from 1941 to 1969, Frank Prenta. Nicknamed the Chief because of his Native American ancestry. He was the head coach of CUS baseball team for, for 24 years, from 1946 to 1969, the longest tenured of any CU head coach in the sport. He also was an assistant football coach for 15 seasons under three different head coaches between 1941 and 1958. He compiled a 257, 255, and 2 record as the baseball head coach during a time in which the program was transitioning between the Mountain States Conference and moving into the Big Seven. He was also an assistant professor in physical education from 1941 until his retirement from the faculty in 1976 and was credited, and this might be the most interesting fact of any bio that we read tonight, he was credited with initiating rope skipping as a popular school activity for fitness here at the University of Colorado. Rope skipping. Also later taught boxing. He passed away in Boulder in 1992 at the age of 85. Here to accept the honor tonight of being inducted into the CU Athletic Hall of Fame for Frank Prentup is his son, Duke. Thank you, Mark. First, thank you to everyone who was involved in getting Chief inducted into this Hall of Fame. It's a distinct honor for Chief to be included in such esteemed company. I think we've already found that out just by listening to the speeches so far, this amazing bunch of people. Also, thanks to all of you who have worked behind the scenes to both organize and to put on this event. You've done a great job. Like every other family, the print-ups have a lot of faults, but ingratitude is not one of them. So speaking for myself, and for the rest of Chief's extended family, we thank you all. With that being said, I'm not gonna dwell on the statistics of Chief's CU coaching career and his ups and downs and win-loss records, and all that kind of thing. That's all publicly available online and in material that you've already heard or some of you may already have. So tonight, I'd like to share with you some lesser known aspects of Chief as a teacher, coach, and as a person. Most everybody knows that the nickname Chief came about due to his Native American heritage. However, very few folks know or have even heard of the name of his tribe. Well, that tribe is the Tuscarora. They are the sixth tribe of the Iroquois Confederation, and the reservation is located on the south shore of Lake Ontario, just east of Niagara Falls themselves. Our family still has cousins who reside there and with whom we communicate regularly. Chief was born in 1907 at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. He was the eldest son of a full-blooded Native American career U.S. Army soldier who served with distinction in both the Mexican War chasing Pancho Villa and in World War I in France. His mother was a German immigrant. He spent his entire youth, unfortunately, in eastern Kansas. And in 1932, he graduated with a master's degree from and it pains me to have to say these words, but from Kansas State University. Back then it was known as Kansas State Agricultural College. So that's a little better. Unfortunately, everybody in my family, except myself and my wife, attended Kansas State University. I'm very, very outnumbered in that regard, so I'm gonna take it when I get home. Anyway, while there, he played quarterback in football and second base in baseball. He also lettered in swimming and was a member of the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity. After college, he went on to a very successful high school coaching and teaching career 
in various small towns around northeastern Kansas. Of interest in that part of his career is that in 1936, while coaching a championship high school basketball team from the small town of Beloit, his star player happened to be a future two-time first-team All-American basketball player for the University of Colorado. His name was Jack Harvey, who was inducted into this very same Hall of Fame in 2012. Chief closed out his Kansas high school coaching and teaching career at Manhattan High School in Manhattan, Kansas. The school's mascot at the time uh, was the Bobcats, AKA the junior cousins of the Kansas State Wildcats. While there, he coached football, basketball, and track, and taught various academic classes uh, to the regular student body. He was beloved and respected by both the student body and his athletes. So much so, in fact, that when he left to come to Colorado, they had the mascot name changed from the Manhattan Bobcats to the Manhattan Indians. They also had a very large mosaic Indian head in headdress and all that regalia installed in the front entryway to the high school and both the name and the mosaic still reside there today. As I just said, Dad came to the University of Colorado in 1941. How that came to be is also quite interesting. While playing football at K-State, one of his teammates and fraternity brothers was a man named Jim Yeager. Well, in 1941, Jim Yeager just happened to be the head football coach here at the University of Colorado. He was in the need of a, an assistant coach, so he called my father and offered him the job. Dad accepted, immediately pulled up stakes came to Colorado and the rest is history. But a lot of that history is not very well known. Chief had many coaching talents which were utilized at the University of Colorado. In addition to coaching baseball as both an assistant coach and the head coach, he was an assistant football coach for numerous years, in particular mostly the backfield coach. And in the early 1940s, he was the freshman basketball coach at this university. In fact, he even coached my future father-in-law as a freshman basketball player just prior to all of them going off to World War II. As many of you in this audience know, Chief was a stern disciplinarian to say the least. He had rules for everything, both for athletics and for life after athletics. On the first day of practice every fall, Chief always stated, and I quote, the first rule is that the chief is never wrong. And of course, the second rule was, learn rule number one. The third rule was pay attention to details and the fourth rule was never be late, always be 10 minutes early. If something ever came up for which Chief didn't have a rule, he'd make one up on the spot, seriously. As players, we violated, if we violated a rule, we got fined one to two bucks. Now, Chief didn't keep the money, because he had an ulterior motive. He squirreled away all the fine money and used it to buy oranges and honey for us to snack on between Friday doubleheaders. Of course, at practice, we didn't have any money on us, so when we screwed up in practice, he invoked, in my opinion, the two most feared words in all of college athletics, and that is, Start lapping. Around the baseball field we'd go, 
And running around a baseball field is not like running around the track. It's a long way. And it just killed me. One day I made the comment of, damn it, chief, give us a break. Uh, it didn't work very good. He called me aside and says, what in the H are you doing? I said, and I had to call him chief. I didn't call him dad. I said, chief, I play first base. I don't do much running. Hell, I strike out half the time. I don't even have to run to first base. He said, start lapping and don't stop until I tell you. Well, I think I ran around the field five or six times. Everybody else ran around at once and he made an example of me. I'm still sore. Anyway, as college kids, we didn't like most of the rules, obviously, such as early curfews, close haircuts, being on time, et cetera, et cetera. On the other hand, some of them were absolutely just plain humorous. As an example, one evening on the way home from a road trip to Iowa State or one of the Kansas schools, I don't recall, at supper on the road at a restaurant somewhere in Kansas, I think, Chief noticed one of our players, a certain alumnus and colorful, really good ball player named Bo Mitchell, finishing off someone else's piece of pie after he had already consumed his own. Well, Chief despised overeating, espousing that you should eat to live, not live to eat. So upon boarding the bus, most of us were already on, Bo steps up, Chief stops him and says, that's two bucks. Incredulous, Bo says, hi, what did I do? I'm on time, here I am, what's the problem? Chief says, you violated the two dessert rule. <laughs> Nobody had ever heard of the two dessert rule, but it still cost Bo two bucks. Oh well, to this day I still chuckle over that one. In closing, as much as we didn't want to admit it, Chief really considered all of us and all of his players in all the sports, his sons, and he wanted us not only to be good players, but to be good men and responsible citizens throughout the rest of our lives. Based on literally hundreds of personal conversations and letters from former players and teammates, I believe that he had an overwhelmingly winning record in that regard. I'm very proud of him to be installed in this hall with all the other stellar personalities. It's a wonderful honor for Chief, and it's a wonderful honor for our family. Thanks for listening tonight.